Hey friends and welcome to another video. This is the weekly energy reading for the week of May 1st through 7. May 1 through 7. My goodness, um, the, the weekend, right, with the new moon eclipse in Taurus um, is interesting, right? The start of eclipse season, so now eclipse season is here and it's all leading up to the full moon um, eclipse in Scorpio. Um, <laughs> Scorpio is the planet, sorry, Scorpio is the sign of, um, that rules Pluto, the planet Pluto, and the eighth house of sex, death, and transformation. This, um, the Scorpio-Taurus axis is really highlighted right now, and, um, Taurus is all about being grounded, so Scorpio is sort of making things very interesting. I'll, I'll put it that way. Let me just read you some of the things going on this week that will clue you into how we're moving from the new moon in Taurus into that full moon cycle. The weekend starts with an activation um, of, no other way to say this, sexual energy. So uh, Venus moves into Aries, right? That's passion, 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 leading romantic situations. Mm, there's persistence feeling relationships very deeply, and it could be just a, a highly emotional and spiritual time. Um, and by spiritual, I mean they're, they're like moments of clarity or self-realization um, in regards to relationships or the things that you value. So when it comes to other people, yes, we value people in, in our relationships, but um, remember Taurus is also about um, that new moon in the second house was all about our like money, property, material, wealth as well, and also our self-confidence, our self-worth. So this can come as, um, it can manifest in a couple ways, like self-realization, understanding yourself, like what you feel about, right? We talked a lot about that. Um, it could manifest in like somebody um, or yourself um, making your feelings known to someone else. Um, or you're just finally going after the things that you really want in life um, externally. Uh, let's see, midweek, Sun conjunct Uranus. <laughs> My favorite cardiologist um, goes by Diamond. I love the way she talks about Uranus because she just says Uranus doesn't care. And so when we have that conjunction, um, right, it wants change. Uranus, the planet, whenever it's like hanging out with anybody, it just wants change and it doesn't really care how it's going to happen. It's sort of like the feeling of revolution and change and just, it's just time. So how are you going to ground yourself in this energy that wants change? It is about destruction and renewal. Again, we, you know, we talk about it a lot, but it shows up again and again because these are archetypes of energy. And then by the end of the week, there's maybe an opening into some more sensitive communication, wisdom, and charm. Um, but again, ending on sun um, in an aspect with Mars, bringing in more assertiveness, setting objectives, hashtag goals. So you see how this is like a bit of a push and pull of like, we're making progress or we're making ourselves known. There's a lot of Mars, Aries. But there's also a lot of Venus, so I feel like the masculine feminine traits of energy are in a push-pull this week. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. That's what I got for that week of May. Let's do our little ditty with the cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get yourself grounded because if you're working with the the moon energies or, or whatever else, you're like really trying to manifest something you've wanted for a long time, ground yourself because that stuff will come. And look what we have here. The end of a tough cycle approaches. This has been coming out a lot. Where's my focus? There it is. The end of a tough cycle approaches, full moon in Capricorn. Like, yeah, it's coming, but there's still a lot of work required. And I'm, I'm getting that it's, it's grounding. Make sure you're taking extra good care of yourself while the things you want change your life so that it can, your life can reflect the, the things that you want to be in it. We have full moon, surrender to the divine. 
Yep. Just your standard full moon. No sign attached to it. And then we have full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. I mean, we have three full moons. Did I say this was going to be an intensely emotional week? I did. I did say that because that's what's in the energies. That's what's in the planets. I did shuffle these cards already, but I'm going to do it again. Don't let pride get in your way. That's the fire. Then there's the earth. And then all of these full moons are just sort of intense timing, intense emotions, feeling things deeply. Feels like a, a choosing of camps, if you will. What do we have underneath? The Six of Cups. This has been showing up a lot as well. Harmony, an offering. This is, um, of all the cards in the deck, this one also speaks to something about the past. Okay, so I, I do feel like there's, there's something innate, like, in your nature. Because the past for me is, like, our, our nature, because it's, like, our childhood, it's where we come from, it's our origins as well. That's sort of resurfacing here. Maybe, maybe that's why it keeps showing up. We have Summer, the Ace of Swords the world. Wow. Eight of cups, the sun, full moon, death. There's Scorpio. The seven of pentacles and the owls. So messages. I think that this is going to be a very positive time, but at the same time, the, the changes that are happening, there's there's a bit of emotional unfulfillment. That's the Eight of Cups, right? Just like leaving behind something that does not serve us, that doesn't, that has been sort of emotionally disappointing. That is gonna die, okay? And then there's a new beginning based on truth, based on clarity. Um, this is gonna feel like something you wanna pour your um, time into. I don't know what it is, but definitely something is ending and there's a new beginning here. The world card has showed up and death. So, I mean, we have the, the two sort of like, um, I call them like thresholds, threshold cards or something, because death is more of like an ego death. It's like something, letting something go, letting something die so that something can be reborn, right? Something can be grown out of that. Um, and what's growing out of that is the Ace of Swords and the Sun. So like some positive clarity, positive insights going in that direction, which is great. But then the World card is the, the bit of a threshold where um, <sighs> my favorite message of, of this card is to like sort of you're, you're in this nebulous sort of zone um, where something is ending for good. And something is not yet begun. So you're like in the intermediate zone. It sort of is asking to, yeah, ground yourself, but but also sort of like sit sit in this energy of things that are changing and observe where you are. The full moon is showing up again. Like the full moon's going to pull a lot of things to the surface. And all you have to do is sit and observe those things. I mean, at the very least. No one's telling you not to go after some things, but um, I, f I feel like the stillness will benefit you because we also have then the owls, the messages coming in. Um, this could be about maybe meditating this week, um, making sure you're open to receiving messages, making yourself available. Um, I feel like because this week is so much fire energy already, um, I put my notes away, but you know, Venus moving into Aries, um, just like the divine um, masculine. Let me pull that up actually. <clears throat> right, and then the sun and Mars at the end of the week. So it's almost like the, the week is bookended by these feelings of um, assertion or wanting to sort of like make our case known. 
Um, and in the middle of that, in, in, the, in the meat of this weak sandwich, is where we see a lot of this clarity. And I would associate that with the um, uh, Jupiter-Pluto, Venus-Pluto. Um, and, and Uranus energy of like something is changing here very radically. I don't know what to make of summer in this case. Mm. If anything, summer, the card summer here is showing that there's a lot of things happening in and around, like life is bustling um, and it can become too much. So there's the trees here on the side where you can uh, take some rest and shelter to recoup and, and gain your strength again before you move on. The end of a tough cycle approach is this card is a reminder that something has not yet been ended. So you can't just sort of let go of the reins and be like, I'm done. It's done. No, I feel like you're very close to putting to bed for good something that has either been bothering you for a long time, has been disappointing. Um, it's almost like wanting to set the record straight. I am you know, maybe this is, this is tied to, to how you're changing as well, because if, if you are, um, in long-term relationships or, you know, work, workships, uh, whatever, friendships, long, anything that's long-term, if you yourself are coming to the realization that something isn't working and you need to sort of make adjustments, set boundaries, or just communicate that, um, you're really focused on this other thing now, like you're sort of shifting. That is the kind of work that's required this week. Um, I feel like everyone would bo would benefit from some openness and clarity. Um, and, th and then be mindful that this is an intense time. Don't let pride get in your way. So just make sure you um, pay attention to how you're communicating. But in general, this is an extremely positive reading. Something is coming. Something is being revealed. And it's going to be a good thing. It's going to be a really good thing. It might feel like this is something that you've always that you've wanted for a very long time and your patience is going to pay off. Um, your patience is paying off. Also your authenticity is paying off because what you're saying is you're what's showing up here in the past is like you're leaving something behind so that you or this thing could be transformed. And it will, it'll be finished. The world card is, is indicative of something, um, having closure, finally. Maybe it'll be around the full moon Scorpio. Maybe the next two weeks is something to pay attention to, but this is the first of those two weeks. This is like us, first, the first week into the quarter moon, that'll be next weekend. Um, leading into that intense Scorpio moon that's coming up uh, mid-May. So yeah, let, let's get just some advice here. Just a few more cards for advice. This whole thing is gonna be so intense. I feel it. Ace of Wands, Two of Pentacles, Four of Swords. It's the same messages coming out over and over. It's like a soap opera drama sort of feeling. It's like the Ace of Wands, sudden inspiration, right? Ideas, this new beginning of wanting to, a desire, right? That's how we're beginning the week. The Two of Pentacles, um, that's, that's more Capricorn energy showing up. You're able to do all the things, aren't you? Like these juggling, these two pentacles, but is it sustainable? I don't know. I feel like it's a bit precarious. So I would say to that, uh, be careful what you decide to take on. You might feel very inspired to take on uh, many different things, but we do have the Four of Swords showing up as the final card. Remember to take time out to rest. So just because the full, the, the, sorry, the new moon in Taurus is behind us by this point, by this week, take that with you 
don't just say I did one weekend of self-care and now I'm good. I feel like this has got to be integrated. It's got to be integrated or else nothing you do will be sustainable. So yeah, I mean, on that note, some messages coming in are like, pay attention to uh, your relationship to self and to that of like your work, for example, because things, um, there might be a lot of things vying for your time or energy is sort of what, what, I, what I understand and it might feel good. Um, just remember that you're the priority, all right? That's what I have. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.